Hi everyone, this is Hayao Tasaki. This is a short webinar entitled The Best Answer to the Puzzle of Gives About N Factorial. It's not about N double factorial, and this one shows that I'm impressed. This is not about my own work, but it's about a recent work by Sasa, Hira, Nakagawa, and Yoshida. I thought it was beautiful and decided to make this video. Here, I only talk about the essence. So if you're interested in details, uh, please look at my notes, uh, which is available in, on archives, and you will find the link in the comment below. Okay, and this is the title of the paper that I want to review, and you can see the archive number here. And here are the authors, Shinichi, very nice picture. This is Ken and Naoko and Akira. Well, congratulations for the beautiful work. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> so I start from the setup and motivation. The setup is very standard. I consider a classical system of n identical particles where the particle number n can be large or small, okay? And this is usual notation, R denotes the positions of particles and actually the part particles live in a box lambda. P denote the momenta, and just the standard Hamiltonian. Uh, this is too small to read, but you don't have to read it. It's just the standard Hamiltonian. And this is usual equilibrium expectation. And this is the partition function. We are interested in this relation, which relates the Helmholtz free energy, which is a thermodynamic quantity to Z, the partition function, which is a statistical mechanical quantity. Uh, C is just a, not, not the speed of light, it's just a positive constant. And you usually, one usually chooses this C to be H cubed, where H is the Planck constant. Okay. And we are especially interested in this N factorial factor. Why do we have this factor? Especially why we are interested in some physical reasoning for having this N factorial. And you might say that you can derive this by using quantum statistical mechanics. And I would say that is only half true, okay? The argument is that uh, if you evaluate this quantity by using semi-classical approximation, especially this trace part, then you precisely get this, okay? So, which is this one. So if you identify this with the Helmholtz free energy, then you can derive this formula, that's true. But why do you want to identify this with the Helmholtz free energy? Of course, this is theoretically very simple and I would say natural, but what is the reason? That is what we want to consider. To discuss this issue, I want to, I have to review two very known, very well known uh, properties about partition function, okay? First of all, uh, I think everybody knows this, uh, by, by differentiating low Z, you get the energy expectation value in the equilibrium state. Uh, the second, property is about quasi-static work. Consider a quasi-static quasi isothermal process in, in which the Hamiltonian is changed slowly from H0 to H1. So there is a, you, have, you, have, you suppose that there is a Hamiltonian uh, with indexed by one parameter alpha, and you suppose that you change alpha slowly from zero to one while the system is kept in touch with a heat bath at inverse temperature beta, okay? And then uh, this is the work you have to do in, to realize this quasi-static process. And then it is well known that this work, it can be written by using Z like this. Okay. This is very well known, but I think this is much more well known. Uh, this is a very standard formula for the pressure, uh, in pressure in terms of log Z. And actually this, expression for the pressure is a very special case of this more general expression for the quasi-static work, okay. Now uh, we can discuss, we, we can discuss the relation between F and Z. Okay, and we do it by discussing standard premises uh, motivated by thermodynamics, okay. First of all, in some, this is premise number one. In thermodynamics, we require something called the Gibbs-Helmholtz relation. It says that the energy in the equilibrium state is given in terms of the free energy like this, okay. Now, if you compare this gibbs helmholtz relation with the relation in number in page two, uh, then you easily conclude that F must be written in terms of Z like this, where phi is anything which is independent of beta. 
The premise number two is the minimum work principle, uh, which deals with this quasi-static work that we discussed. And this principle says that this W is written as a difference of free energy like this. Now, again, you compare this premise uh, with this property number two of, uh, of the partition function Z, then you conclude that F must be written like this with phi, which is anything but independent of H, okay. Now, uh, you might conclude from these two that phi is a constant, but, but be careful. Uh, you have to recall that n, the number of particles does not change in any quasi-static process, okay? So that means uh, there, that means phi can be n dependent, okay? So from these premises, what we find is here, okay? And here phi n is still an arbitrary function of n. Okay? It's not determined. And I would like to remark that it's okay to, uh, it, it, it is okay to proceed without fixing phi n. Even if you do not know phi n, you can compute energy expectation or you can compute quasi-static works. That's, I think that is basically enough for the application of equilibrium statistical mechanics. Uh, but of course, of course it's better to have uh, fixed phi n. So you want to ask, are there any physical premises that fix phi n? And actually there is one you find in statistical mechanics textbook uh, that is called the extensivity. So in this TD denotes the thermodynamics. In thermodynamics, the Helmholtz free energy satisfies this condition called the extensivity. T is the temperature V the volume and the amount of substance and lambda is an arbitrary positive scaling factor. So F must satisfy this. And then uh, if you compare this extensivity and this expression for F, you find that this phi n should, must be written like this, c prime n to the power n. And if you recall the Stirling formula, uh, this is basically same as n factorial, but provided that n is large. Uh, first of all, this extensivity is valid only in my macroscopic thermodynamic limit, okay? In small system, there is always some correction, finite volume correction, surface correction, and you don't have extensivity. And of course, the Stirling, the Stirling formula is valid only for very, very large n, as you know. Okay, so what shall we do? Here come my friends, Sasa, Hira, Nakagawa, and Yoshida, and they propose, first of all, to study a quasi study a uh, family of quasi static isothermal processes that I decided to call the SH, SHNY process. Uh, the process starts from the standard equilibrium state with n particles and Hamiltonian H0. And it goes, it, it proceeds under the uh, inverse temperature beta. And this is a final state. In the final state, first of all, the, the box is divided into two parts, lambda L and left part and right part. And also there, is a, there are specified and fixed number of particles n L and n R. And you, in this final state, you can see here, the, in the left part, you have exactly NL particles with HL, Hamiltonian HL, and it's in equilibrium with beta. And on the right, in the right room, you have exactly NR particles, and again, it's in equilibrium with beta, okay. And I would like to stress, this is almost equilibrium state, of course, but it's not a standard equilibrium state. Uh, first of all, these two rooms may have different pressures. In that case, it's totally non-equilibrium, okay. But even if they have exactly the same pressures, uh, I would say that this is different from the standard equilibrium state, which is obtained uh, when you have very small hole in this wall and uh, the, part, the two rooms can exchange particles. In that equilibrium, in that genuine equilibrium state, uh, even if the, the average of uh, number of particles are NL and NR, uh, there always is fluctuation around this, okay? And in this case, in this state, there is no fluctuation of particle numbers. Particle numbers are specified and fixed. That's a, that's a basic difference. And as you may have noted, uh, this difference becomes essential if you're consider, considering a small system, okay? And then uh, this is the premise number three of Sasa, Hira, Nakagawa, and Yoshida. Uh, this is, I would call this refined minimum work principle. So they require that WSHNY, which is the work you need to realize this SHNY process is given 
that's the difference of free energy like this. And of course, this is a standard familiar relation you see in, in thermodynamics that the point, but the point here is that they are requiring this familiar relation to this kind of process, okay? which, is, which slightly extended, extend the usual business. Okay, so in the rest of this webinar, uh, I will look at, uh, look at an example of SHNY process and show that this work WSHNY is written in terms of the partition functions like this. Now, now if you compare this expression of W and this requirement and this expression for F, then you will easily find that the only thing you can do, you can have is this relation at the bottom. So uh, here you have actually uh, Sasahira and Nakagawa and Yoshida have derived this uh, desired n factorial factor, beautiful. So the, in the remaining part of this webinar, I like to discuss the uh, concrete example of a SHNY process. And this is actually different than the example considered in the original paper. And this process was discussed back in 2011 by Jordan Horowitz and Juan Parondo in the, in the context of Maxwell's demon. Okay, so this is just a rough sketch. So you want to go from here to here, but instead of going directly, you go through three steps, trapping process, wall insertion and untrapping process. Okay. I will discuss, but uh, the point is that in this wall insertion process, you don't need any wall. And the work you need to do in this trapping process and untrapping process can be computed by using the standard formula that I reviewed in page two. Okay, so let's look at the, let's, let, let's look at the detail of this process. So uh, I, would like to first introduce something I call the trapping Hamiltonian H trap. So this is uh, just a standard Hamiltonian with this single body potential and two body interaction. But this single body potential U trap is a specially designed trapping potential like this. So it has N, exactly N identical deep minima. Okay. And moreover among N, deep minima, NL minima lives on this left box and NR minima lives on this right box, okay? And also this, uh, this interaction is a short range repulsive potential, repulsive interaction, and it gives a strong penalty if two particles come to a single minimum. Okay. So this means that if this trapping potential is deep enough, deep enough, then in the equilibrium, and this repulsive, repulsive interaction is strong enough. And then in the corresponding equilibrium state, you, have, you basically have this kind of configuration where uh, each minimum is occupied by exactly one particle. Okay? No double occupations, no empty minimum. Okay? That is the point. And this, this becomes more and more, accu more um, more, more accurate uh, if the potential is deeper and deeper and this is stronger and stronger. Okay, so in this case, uh, this D trap is the corresponding partition function, but it can be approximated like this. What is this? First of all, this small Z is the partition function for a single particle, which is confined in a single deep minimum. Okay, and uh, okay, so it deals with single one and since Oh, since we have n particle, we have this power n, and this n factorial counts the number of ways to assign uh, particles to these minima. Okay, so this is the trapping Hamiltonian. Then the rest is easy. Uh, I will define trapping process. Uh, consider this interpolating Hamiltonian where alpha runs between zero and one. Okay, and when alpha equals zero, then you don't have this. So this is simply the initial Hamiltonian. When alpha equal one, then you have this. So this is simply trapping Hamiltonian. H zero slowly changes to H trap. And so you start from H zero and the equilibrium state of H zero and change alpha slowly from zero to one. And while the system is in touch with the heat pass at temperature beta. And then you, 
this is just a standard thing you and you get a quasi static isothermal process and the work you have to do is computed by the standard relation like this and here uh we have z trap here so i plug this approximation in here and then since we have n we have this n and n factorial is moved here so this was a trapping process like this so i started from h0 and all the particles are trapped now uh, in the next step we divide the box lambda into two boxes lambda l and lambda r by inserting a thin wall like this but now before the wall insertion the all the particles are trapped so this does not change anything and you don't this does not require any work okay? very simple so this is a trick and then uh, the rest is the untrapping process, uh, you can see like this. So uh, in each room, you change this trapping Hamiltonian slowly to the de desired final Hamiltonian, h trap to hr. And this is just the opposite. It's just exactly the opposite of the trapping process. So it's quite easy. You don't have to think anything. And also the work, the work is simply the reverse of the uh, work you needed for trap. So you simply copy this and change the sign and change N to NL and things like that. And you get uh, these untrapping works. Okay, so that's it. And uh, we can, we can, we just, it only remains to compute the total work needed for the SHMY process. And so this is the work. And uh, since W wall is, well, not W or W wall, W wall is zero. Uh, we have this, and you easily find that these all these terms containing small z cancel, and you get this desired relation. Very good. So n factorial has been derived. Okay, that's basically all, but probably you have many questions. Here are two of them. Uh, what does it precisely mean that classical particles are identical? Good question. Uh, in this case, uh, identity is in a purely dynamical sense, okay? So if you look at this discussion, you find that what you, what you need are the same mass, the same potential, the same interaction, dot, dot, dot. And this is very different from the quantum case where the identity means the basic symmetry of the Hilbert space, okay? And, but this dynamical identity is used in many places, but most crucially, in the world insertion process. Uh, this identity, uh, the identity of the particles guarantee that the world insertion process is reversible. Please look at my note for details. And the second question is what happens if the particles are identical in this dynamical sense, but are still distinguishable? Suppose that they have the same mass, same inter interaction, same dot, 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 but still there are red and green particles. In this case, uh, this is a nice thought experiment. You suppose that you start from this situation where red and green particles are separated into left and right rooms, and you perform reverse of SHNY process, and here you have a single room, and then you perform forward SHNY process, and then you get this kind of situation, and the colors are mixed, and this looks like an irreversible process. What shall we do? Well, nothing changes is the answer. If we simply ignore the colors and only analyze these processes and the quasi-static works associated with this process, and then it's the story is totally the same and you will get the same factor and factorial. But, but, but the very fact that you could distinguish these colors probably mean that there, there are interactions or potential that distinguish between these colors. And then you can make use of these potential so interaction to uh, design a new process, new process. And then in, in that case, uh, this identity does not hold and all this discussion does not hold. Okay. So, well, uh, okay, that's basically all, but this was a very brief summary of this very interesting work. So uh, if you want to know more, please look at my note and of course the original paper. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.